That along with the punch game. So you had these two analog sticks to control your movement, your torso, and your punches. Knockout Kings was the series that took real boxers and put them in the game. Uh, for the first time, you're playing guys like, you know, Marvin Hagler and Roberto Duran and even Muhammad Ali. And they, they actually were cool because they'd go back in time and let you play classic boxers like Rocky Marciano you could play. And the control hallmark of the Knockout King series was using buttons for punches. The face buttons on the PlayStation controller tied to the type of punch that you threw, whether it be a jab, a hook, or an uppercut, or whatever. And they, they, they milked that for a long time. When Knockout Kings 2001 was coming down uh, the line, everybody was super stoked, especially since the, the early images we saw just looked incredible. And then you actually played the game, and it was like, oh, snap. It was like, what were they, you know, how could you go through the trouble of making a game look that awesome and then not have the game play to back it up? What? I believe it was the first game to feature female boxers as well. Christy Martin was in that game. And it also featured guys like Lennox Lewis, David Tua, uh, Fernando Vargas, Butterbean. Butterbean was in it. It's good stuff. What they introduced with 2001 was sort of what they referred to as a real combo system, whereas you had to mix your punches up in an intelligent manner. So it got you thinking about how a real fighter might think in the ring. The next one, you know, that was the, that's the funny thing, is then you go into 2002, right? And 2002 is like, whoa, they got the gameplay right, but what did they do to the models? 2002, they changed it. They made it so that the models, they called them hero models. And these hero models, you know, they look like super versions of these, these fighters, right? Like, and they had Trinidad in it, and he had this huge chest and these big old arms. And They tried to improve positioning with your body as well. If you move just a bit back, your boxer would back up. If you move it just a bit forward, he might duck. That was a, a definite move towards giving you more control and making the game feel more realistic than ever before. I think Knockout Kings 2003, with the, uh, the crazy slugfest mode and like the, the action they had with the C-Stick, I think that was the first time that they kind of were tipped into the whole, well, you know, we got a couple of analog sticks here. You know, I was like, maybe we should do something with those. I think the game was more like just to throw a bone to GameCube owners who were, you know, probably wondering why they didn't have a boxing game. And <laughs> that my advice to be would be not to buy a GameCube. If you want to box, good lord. Um, Fight Night 2004, obviously like, you know, a huge step up from any other boxing game with our total punch control system, using the analog sticks for great control over your characters. And it allowed you to throw those punches and really get, get into the game. We knew right away that, hey, we need to give you some better ability to control your fist, better ability for quick defense in the game. Left stick is movement, holding a trigger, upper body control. Right stick is punches holding a you know trigger, and all of a sudden you've got total blocking control, and it's like that was what everybody wanted for so long with these games is to lose that barrier and be able to feel like you're doing it, and that was what that control scheme did. So with Fight Night Round Two, they upped their game you know tremendously. That was one of the big things we put in Fight Night Round Two was obviously the, like the EA Sports Haymaker and like giving you that ability through the analog stick to control the power of your punch. Now you really did have a set of punches for people that wanted to headhunt. How do you do that in real life? Well, hey, I'm here, I crank it back, and I unload. And it's like, okay, well that's what we gotta do on the analog stick. So you crank it back, and you unload for the haymaker. And time would slow down, and the guy's face would distort. Like another one of the big new features that we put in uh, Fight Night Round 2 was the EA Sports Cut Man. You're in the corner, and you're reducing the swelling on the guy's eyes, and you're tending to his cuts. Fight Night Round 2 also had a great uh, career mode, and it started off with its uh, create, a, create a boxer mode. You had things like you could uh, switch weight classes in the game, and you, and in the original you had to eventually retire. Uh, but in round two, you could take a, a a guy and really just fight for as long as you wanted, and you know he could get older and older and less effective in the ring, but he didn't have to retire until until you made him. Thank you, gentlemen, and now the interview you've all been waiting for: the man who's single-handedly bringing back the Elvis shades. Fight Night Round 3 creator, Kudo.
Sonoda. Hey, my name's Kudo Sonoda. I'm the executive producer on Fight Night Round 3, made at EA Chicago. Ah! EA Sports Fight Night Round 3. Obviously, hey, best looking game on next gen, most realistic graphics, most realistic audio. But the thing I'm most happy about with Fight Night Round 3 it's not just the graphics, it's not the way the game looks, it's the way the game plays. We've brought the same level of gameplay innovation to our in-the-ring action as we do to the graphics. So first thing, we got three big new impact punches. In boxing, the thing that makes boxing the most exciting sport, filled with drama, all the emotion, at any time, one big punch can totally change a fight. You're down, you've been getting your ass kicked for 10 rounds. If you can land a big shot, drop the guy, you're gonna get back in, you're gonna have a chance to win. So this year, we got our big three new impact punches. The Haymaker, the Flash KO Punch, and the Big Stun Punch. <laughs> First, there's the haymaker. It's a high risk, high reward punch. You're gonna throw a right hook, you move your analog stick out to the side, you crank it back for extra power, and then unload. And that's gonna be a big devastating punch impact on your opponent. You're gonna get a little adrenaline boost so you can move in to take him out. Our new punch this year, also, the flash KO punch. You move the analog stick to the side, you crank it back even farther than you would for a haymaker, getting extra power on it, and then unload. Then we got our third impact punch, which is the stun punch. You move your fist out to the side with the analog stick, you crank it way back, just as far as you would for a flash KO punch, and then you gotta follow through for an even bigger arm extending punch impact that does even more damage on your opponent. And that throws you into a first person mini game where the guy who's hurt, he's trying to defend, he's trying to hold on, he's just trying to survive, and you're in fainting, faking punches, landing punches, doing a lot of damage, looking for that one big punch that's gonna drop him down to the canvas and win the fight for you. They're high risk, high reward, they're hard to land, they do tons of damage, each punch can totally change the course of the fight, but you gotta set the punch up. You gotta use your other punches, fake the guy out so you can have that impact punch in reserve, ready to unload. Use your defense, parry a good shot, throw the guy off balance. But you're far behind, you're looking for the knockout, you're down on the scorecard, load up on the one big impact punch. And win the fight. He goes down hard. I'm not sure he knows where he is. You can hear the crowd going crazy after that knockout. Hey, if you're the guy who gets hit by an impact punch, we got some special insider game spot tips for how to survive in the KO moment. So guy hits you with a big flash KO punch, boom, you're hurt, you're on the defense, you're trying to survive. So first thing obviously is, hey, you go, you can use the clinch, grab on, get yourself some health and energy back. But new thing this year in fight night round three, when you're hurt, he's trying to land a big punch, get a good parry in, the perfect block, throw the guy off balance, and then counter with a haymaker. And that haymaker is gonna put the other guy in the flash KO moment, is gonna drain his health bar, and then you're able to go in and knock him out. This year now, you're able to customize your own style so you can make the way that your fighter fights, the way your fighter moves, exactly the way that matches the, the tactics you want to use in the ring. You can choose from a whole set of different movement styles. You can get, hey, a really quick speed style. You can also choose different punch styles. You can get the big Joe Frazier hooks. You can get the Jermaine Taylor jab. Any of those types of things you can customize your fighter with so that you can fight exactly the way that you want in the ring. This year you can have, hey, like a cross block. Very basic block, gives you a lot of protection, but doesn't give you as many opportunities to counter punch. Then we've got the Philly Shell, a little more advanced defensive style. It doesn't give you as much protection, but if you're able to do the blocks, you get longer parry times, gives you better opportunity to counter punch. Then we've got a balance blocking style, kind of in between. You're not that good at blocking, but still you want to try and use the parries. Hey, you've got the nice parry style, a little more balance blocking, good parries, good opportunities to counter punch. Obviously, the new Xbox 360 technology, there's features we're able to put into Fight Night Round 3 on next gen that we can't get into current gen. So two big ones. First, the EA Super Punch. When you see that punch land, we talked about it earlier. The face rippling, the deformation, really seeing the energy and power of each punch just rippling through the guy's face, scrambling his brains, doing the damage that the big punches in fights really do. Stay calm, keep your guard up. It's not just that the boxers look like they're boxers, they look like the real life boxers, they move like the real life boxers, they fight like the real life boxers. The most realistic characters you've seen in any game, looks, movement, way they fight, all in Fight Night Round 3. We hope you've enjoyed GameSpot's look at the history of boxing video games from the 8-bit days to the next gen era. From 3rd Street Gym in San Francisco, California, I'm Rich Gallup, and we'll see you next time.